Good morning, everyone, and you're very welcome to today's session, which is called Building for the Future, where we will take you through Fulch Ireland's recent and current capital investment projects for tourism, as well as taking a look at what the future holds. Many of you will have seen we launched our 2022 plans earlier this week. And for those of you that did not get to join us in person, a recording of the full event will be shared with you later today. I don't want to repeat myself too much, but just for the benefit of those who didn't have the opportunity to join us on Tuesday, I will say this. It is fantastic to be able to speak with you all this week as we begin what we all hope will be the transition from a survival to a sustained and sustainable recovery. As I mentioned at our Survival to Recovery event on Tuesday, destination development is one of the key opportunities we have identified as we come out of this crisis. We all know that the quality of the experience a visitor has in a destination is the ultimate determinant of how successful a tourism destination will be. We know that investing in world-class attractions is critical for driving tourism growth, and the long-term projects that you'll hear about this morning will be essential for driving that growth in coming years. During today's session, we'll be showing you some of the really excellent projects that will be coming on stream up to 2025 and beyond. Despite all of the challenges of COVID, we've seen a number of projects open during 2020 and 2021. And I'd like to acknowledge and thank our partners on these projects in the OPW, Quilche, the National Parks and Wildlife Service, Waterway Ireland, local authorities, and many other stakeholders. They have combined to deliver and launch these projects with passion and enthusiasm. These openings and announcements that happened during 2020 and 2021 provided uplifting stories for tourism during such difficult times, always signalling that Ireland will be a better position to deliver for overseas and domestic visitors as we emerge out of this pandemic. During today's session, you will find out more about how we are going to continue to open the outdoors and develop destinations. We will also have speakers from our strategic partners in the OPW and Waterways Ireland to talk to you about the development that is going on in heritage and activity tourism. And together with our partners and with you, the industry, we are working to ensure that Ireland's offering to continues to go from strength to strength. So before I hand you over to Orla and her team to take you through product development up to 2025, we're going to first show you a short video that highlights all the projects that were completed in 2020 and 2021, which was an outstanding achievement given the incredibly challenging circumstances. I hope you find this session valuable and interesting, and we welcome any questions that you have at the end. Projects which opened in 2020 and 2021 included. A completely updated visitor experience with a new walkthrough exhibit, immersing visitors in the archaeological and historical heritage of the Bruna Boyne site and the Boyne Valley area. Reopen to the public with a transformed visitor experience. Carlingford Castle on the shores of Carlingford Lock is the epitome of an atmospheric and ruined castle. Relocating Kilkenny's famed Butler Gallery from the basement of Kilkenny Castle to the completely refurbished Evans home has created a stunning new attraction for visitors and locals. By the new Butler Gallery, a leftover grassy bank along the River Nore has been rejuvenated as a new public space for a pleasant walk in Kilkenny City. complete immersion in the utter excitement of horse racing, with visitors breeding, raising and racing their own virtual horse in a new type of visitor attraction. A year-round, all-weather experience. Restoration of Johnstown Castle, with its underground tunnel, historic trails and gardens, together with improved interactive exhibits of Irish farming life, has created a wonderful indoor-outdoor experience. Dublin's iconic Custom House, redeveloped as a flagship visitor experience in the Docklands, includes new and interactive exhibits telling the rich history of the building while showcasing its exceptional architecture. Restoration of the world-renowned but long-forgotten Shackleton Gardens has created a new visitor attraction in Dublin 15, a hidden gem. 
11 other projects funded by Fáilte Ireland's small grants opened in 2020 and 2021 with enhanced visitor experiences in Dublin and the Wild Atlantic Way, increasing footfall and satisfaction in destinations while dispersing visitors to improved economic impact for everyone. Thank you, Paul. Isn't it great to see that even during COVID, all these great projects were completed and are now ready and open for our recovery in 2022. In a post-COVID world, we anticipate there will be even more competition from other tourism destinations. Therefore, it is imperative that Ireland's visitor experiences must be engaging, authentic and best in class. The purpose of today's session is to take you through the pipeline of projects we are working on with partners. It's important to have a pipeline of new and enhanced visitor experiences to aid not just our recovery, but our future growth. Before we begin, I'd like to share with you the structure for this session. I will be joined today by the following speakers and together we will take you through the following agenda. The video highlighted all the projects that were completed in 2020 and 2021. In section two, I will share with you all the projects that will open between now and 2025. During COVID, we all got a new appreciation for the outdoors and Fiona Monaghan, Head of Attractions, will share with you all the projects being developed in this area. Partnership is key for successful tourism development. I'm delighted today to have Rosemary Collier from OPW and John McDonough from Waterways Ireland joining us to share with you all the amazing projects they are working on. Finally, Rory Dean will dream big. Our future is bright and we believe we have some exciting projects which are ambitious but very exciting. There's quite a lot to take you through, so I think we will just jump into it. In this section, I'm going to spend some time taking you through all the projects between now and 2025 that will open. These projects are well dispersed around the country and are being developed to best in class standards. So let me take you on a journey as we crisscross the country and see all the exciting projects on, coming on stream that will drive demand and drive tourism growth in Ireland. First up, is the Cage of Fields. This remarkable Neolithic site at Cage of Fields in County Mayo contains the oldest known stone wall fields in the world, dating back nearly 6,000 years. We have redeveloped the visitor centre, replacing the existing exhibition and creating a new and vibrant experience for visitors with new archaeological material and knowledge about the site. The new visitor experience will be over two floors and will include immersive visual audio 360 animated experience to show the evolution of this unique site. This project is nearing completion and due to open to the public in quarter one. The Blasket Centre consists of three elements of this project. The first was a refurbishment of cottages on the Great Blasket Island, which has been completed, and this has improved the visitor experience on the island. The spectacular visit viewing platform was completed in 2020. Located on the mainland adjacent to the visitor centre, the platform provides the visitor with dramatic views of the coastline and the Blasket Islands. The final piece of this jigsaw is the Visitor Centre, which is currently under redevelopment with an upgraded visitor experience and exhibition. New AV displays have been developed to bring a new dimension to the rich story of island life and will be accompanied by a new graphic scheme and interactives. This project is nearing completion and also due to open in Q1. Moving to Nouth, you will have seen in the video earlier the work that had been completed at the Bruna Boina Visitor Centre. Nouth is the second of three capital projects we are working on in the Bruna Boina complex. This project includes the construction of a new visitor centre in a former farm buildings opposite the Nouth site. This new centre houses a state-of-the-art exhibition and is accompanied by a new courtyard area, conference space and visitor facilities. For those of you who don't know, Nouth boasts the largest collection of Neolithic art in Europe. It is older than the Egyptian pyramids and older than Stonehenge. Within the archaeological site itself, an upgraded black box interpretive space has been installed within the main mound. And this is truly a unique experience and definitely worth a visit. Also, a large coach parking facility has also been constructed, which will be great for coach tours. This site is due to open on the 3rd of March. A really exciting project in Ireland's hidden heartlands is the National Famine and Stro Museum at Stokestown Park. This will tell the story of the Great Hunger in an engaging, respectful way. Visitors will be immersed in the culture and day-to-day -day life of Ireland in the years before, during and after the Great Famine. 
From how the ancestry rose in Ireland from 1620 onwards, when Catholics owned two-thirds of the land, to the early 1800s when the majority of the land was owned by landlords. Visitors will find out what a Victorian party the big house was like before moving into the contrasting Cottier life zone, where life for rural labourer is depicted in the pre-famine years, followed by sections dedicated to the great hunger, eviction and migration. The new visitor centre and cafe will really transform the estate into a sustainable heritage visitor attraction. This experience will bring over 50,000 more visitors and 13.2 million in additional revenue to the area over the next five years. The Family Museum in Strokestown Park House and Gardens is managed by the Irish Heritage Trust and, is currently, and construction is currently ongoing and is due to open in Q2. Moving to Wicklow, the redevelopment of Avondale House and Forest Park will provide an iconic and world-class visitor destination in Rathdrum. This 16 million project, a partnership between Quiltia, Vulture Ireland and EAK, will transform Avondale into a unique family attraction and a key new destination in Ireland's ancient East. It is expected to open to the public in May 2022. This park will continue a visitor orientation hub in a new cafe and renovated courtyard buildings. The wall garden will also be rejuvenated. At Home with the Parnells will tell the story of the life and times of Charles Stuart Parnell and his two sisters, Annie and Fanny. And believe me, they've had quite an interesting life. Avondale is the home of forestry in Ireland and visitors will learn the history of the forest park from the 1700s to the present day and beyond. Visitors will learn about the growing importance of wood as a consumer preference is rapidly turn towards selecting renewable and sustainable construction materials. However, my favourite elements are the unique 1.2 kilometre treetop walkway, which is fully accessible and will bring the visitors from the top of the trees to below the roots. But the wow moment will be the 12 storey high wooden viewing tower, which you can see here under construction. This tower will offer spectacular 360 degree views of Avondale Forest Park and the surrounding countryside. And the piece de resistance, it includes a slide the whole way down. So great fun for kids and adults alike. Throughout this project, we'll be showcasing the use of high quality Irish wood. Moving to the Wild Atlantic Way, the development of Ireland's first state-of-the-art national surf centre is a new departure for tourism development. Ireland has the potential to develop as a world-class surfing destination and investment will significantly enhance the tourism potential of the local area and ensure that we capitalise on the growing reputation Ireland has as a surfing destination. Set to open in September this year, it will support the tourism industry in Strand Hill through the provision of state-of-the-art services and facilities for surfing schools, surf visitors and many more. Moving to Waterford, in 2019, Waterford City and County Council and Fulcher Ireland as joint funding partners were awarded funding for the redevelopment of Mount Congreve House and Gardens under the Rural Regeneration Development Fund and Project Ireland 2040. OPW is also a funder to the provision of funding for the operation and maintenance of the house and gardens. With building contractors now on site, work has commenced to develop Mount Congreve, which is home to one of the largest collections of plants in the world, as a world-class tourist destination. The works will involve the partial redevelopment and restoration of the Mount Congreve House and provide enhanced visitor amenities, including a new visitor centre with cafe and retail spaces, as well as an enhanced visitor experience to the gardens and planted woodlands, which are of an international importance. The major redeve redevelopment project will consolidate the position of Mount Congreve as one of the great gardens of the world and create a new vibrant attraction in Waterford fa for families and overseas visitors. It will also open up the heretofore private areas of the house to the public, which is sure to offer fascinating insight into the history of Mount Congreve. It is intended that on completion, the project will deliver to the destination an additional 15,000 visitors annually, generating additional employment and revenue opportunities across the destination. And as it's along the Waterford Greenway, it will be a must-stop experience for all. Moving to Sligo, the Sligo Culture Plaza, this is, is a working title. This involves the development of an existing city centre car park into a permanent flagship all-weather events venue and orientation focal point for visitors and locals in Sligo Town. This project aims to act as a central focus to many of Sligo's attractions, providing additional reasons for people to visit the town centre and to stay longer, while providing an attractive outdoor dining and event space. The development of the plaza gives opportunity to develop walking trails from the centre of Sligo and it concludes the development of trails south of the Garrogue River, along Durley Park, into Cleaver Park and along Loch Gill. This trail also connects the pontoon at Durley Park from where visitors can board boat tours of Loch Gill.
So it really makes this a really exciting project for Sligo. This project is due to start construction shortly and will be completed in time for an early 2023 opening. Moving to the Iron Islands now and to Donangus, this project involves the redevelopment of an existing visitor interpretation at the Donangus Visitor Centre and the upgrading of interpretation at this site and other sites on Inishmore. The aim of this project is to encourage circulation around the island and a series of signature interpretation points will be installed at a small number of important island monuments. These enhancements are due to be in place for the summer of 2023. To Longford next, and this is a community project driven by Granard Moat Community Enterprise Group in partnership with Longford County Council and Folge Ireland. Together we are awarded three million for the Rural Regeneration and Development Fund. Granard is home to one of the finest examples of an Anglo-Norman fortification in Ireland. This new attraction will tell the story of life in Ireland under the Normans and consist of a recreated moss, bailey and borough, where visitors will be transported 800 years back in time to experience how the Normans lived, worked and played. Key features of the attraction will include structures across the park, ranging from a village mill to a typical family home. The project will enhance the tourism offering in the Midlands in, and increase the stock of visitor attractions in Ireland's hidden heartlands, and is expected to grow to 45,000 paying visitors. Next to Kilkenny. This is a brand new attraction will tell the story of Ireland's medieval capital through the real people of the time. It incorporates the 400-year Tulsil, the town hall, the existing medieval mile museum and a newly landscape interpreted grounds of the church and graveyard under a new unifying brand. The new attraction is carefully differentiated from existing Kilkenny heritage attractions in order to broaden the offer of Kilkenny overall as a destination, using fun, humour and horrible history style stories to appeal in particular to family groups who are likely to have already visited the more traditional heritage experience of Kilkenny Castle. The experience will span four floors to include a ticketing and retail offering, a 360 degree civic experience and on the second floor a unique clock tower experience in the upper levels of the historic Toastal building, which will give panoramic views over the city. The final element will see visitors descend to the dungeons below to learn about the darker side of medieval life, common crimes, bizarre punishments and the poor handmaid burned at the stake in place of her mistress. You'll have to visit to learn out why. An evening character and candlelit tour, guided tour will also be developed, targeted tour groups, which will increase dwell time and overnights in the city, which has been identified as a gap in Kilkenny's offering. Moving along back to Dublin, a master plan was created for Dublin Castle and a key element of this was the development of a new visitor welcome experience. The master plan identified that visitors often don't know where to start within the castle or how to experience it. The provision of this new visitor welcome hub will provide the orientation point for visitors to allow them to explore the full range of experiences within the castle. The hub, which will include reception, welcome exhibition, ticketing, digital services and visitor welfare facilities. It will be an obvious and consistent arrival and orientation point. It will give better access and visibility between the upper castle yard through to the south facing terrace overlooking the Dublin Gardens and Chester Beatty Library. It will also provide approved access to the new attraction at the Record Tower, which leads me nicely to our next project. Dublin's Castle Medieval Record Tower has been empty and inaccessible to visitors. This project will see a new lift being built which will allow visitors to the top of the tower, allowing panoramic views of the grounds and the oldest part of the city. The project also includes a new museum showcasing Dublin's medieval treasures with a strong link to Dublin Castle. It will cover four floors right through the tower. The double height top floor and the viewing platforms above it will be available as a unique venue for social events linked to international conferences. Carrowmore is the largest cemetery of megalithic tombs in Ireland and the aim of this project is to strengthen the links with it and Cajia Fields and to act as a hub for nearby locations of Carrowkeel, Knocknaray and Queen Maeve's Carn, encouraging dispersal right across the Sligo area. This project includes a new and vibrant exhibition at the Visitor Centre and is due to open to the public in 2024. Moving to Galway, the existing Galway City Museum, located at Spanish Parade and one of Galway's most popular cultural hotspots, welcomes over 250,000 visitors per year. This project seeks to create a new breed of museum in Ireland. The new museum aims to radically redevelop the entire site of the current museum, including the iconic Spanish arts and the adjacent medieval Seagate site. This new three-storey state-of-the-art building over the Seagate site will include fully interactive, immersive visitor experiences. 
This new museum will bring to life the influence the Atlantic has had on the culture and traditions of people living on the western seaboard, creating an overall cohesive visitor experience and seamless connectivity throughout the attraction. Personally, I think a key attractor will be that visitors will be able to walk on top of Spanish arch. This project is currently being designed and is due to open to the public in 2024. And finally, we head to Wexford to New Ross. Wexford County Council and Fulcher were joint funding partners to the Rural Recreation and Development Fund in 2019. And this project aims to create three visitor experiences that will lead to the regeneration of New Ross as a tourist destination. Firstly, a world-class new immersive visitor attraction telling the unique Wexford Norman story through the Norman Knight William Marshall will be developed in a historic building on South Quay. Secondly, the creation of a new immersive visitor experience at Dumbrody Famineship that will transform the visitor back to New Ross Town and Port of Emigration. And finally, the development and expansion of the Norman Way, which will see it extending from the Dumbrody Famineship through to New Ross Pass, past various Norman sites, through to St Mary's Church. The Dumbrody Famine Ship currently receives approximately 70,000 visitors annually. The addition of a new immersive WOW visitor experience here will see significant incremental growth over the next five years. So, we've come to the end of our journey across the country, and I think you'll agree you have some exciting and world-class visitor experiences being developed. On just these projects, Volta will have invested 36 million, but leveraged 78 million for tourism. And between them, these visitor experiences will deliver an additional 1.1 annual visitors by year five and will have increased employment in these destinations by 22,000. But that's not the end. We also have an additional 12 projects that are an early stage of design, development or seeking planning. In future sessions, we'll hopefully be able to delve into these further and bring these projects to life for you. We will now move on to our third section, opening the outdoors. Pre-COVID and Folch's five-year strategy recognised the importance of opening the outdoors. During COVID, the outdoors has become more important for tourism. With our stunning landscape, visitors can be active in nature while enjoying the beautiful vistas, solitude and sounds of nature. With our temperate climate, there are significant growth opportunities where Ireland could become a year-round outdoor recreation destination. So I'm going to hand you over to Fiona Monaghan, Head of Activities Now, who will take you through the exciting projects being worked on in this area. Thank you, Orla, and good morning, everybody. Over the next little while, I'm going to share with you some of the work that we are currently engaging in in Falcha to achieve our ambition of opening the outdoors and making Ireland recognised internationally as a best-in-class activity destination. In particular, I'm going to talk about four areas in terms of how we do our business. One is with large-scale investments to support product development. The other is around partnerships and collaborations with departments, state agencies and local authorities. I'm also going to share with you some details of the role of master planning in product development. And then I'll finish up with how we engage in opening the outdoors in urban spaces. So first up, our investment scheme for platforms for growth. And last April, Minister Catherine Martin announced investment funding of 20 million to develop a portfolio of water sports facilities at beach, lake and river locations across the country. The scheme was designed specifically for local authorities who will build the buildings but will also maintain and operate them as viable visitor offerings. The scheme is 100% grant aided and a key criteria for eligibility was the provision of existing water sport providers in these locations offering a visitor experience. As part of the process, we worked collaboratively with the local authorities to come up with an exemplar design for the buildings. This is very important from a visitor's perspective in ensuring a consistent approach to not just the look and feel of the buildings, but also in terms of the services on offer at them. The key outcomes of the scheme are not only a significantly enhanced visitor experience, but also to help with the regional spread of visitors across the country, and in particular, extending the tourist season into the shoulder months, and making the engagement in water sports activities a lot more enjoyable. They will also greatly enhance the portfolio of outdoor infrastructure in a destination. While this project was in design prior to the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we feel that these facilities will add greatly to the recovery of rural Ireland and really confirm Ireland's position as an outdoor activity destination. So some of the key design features the buildings will have your usual public services, but with the addition of a range of showers, both hot and cold, 
These can be used for equipment washdown and wetsuit cleaning. We will also have safe, secure storage areas for your personal belongings and an orientation space where the activity providers can meet their clients and share with them details of their experience in addition to a safety briefing. The buildings are being developed as nearly zero new carbon neutral buildings. They will have solar panels in the roof, a grass roof to blend in with the local landscape and most importantly mitigation measures have been identified to ensure that the runoff of grey water and disposal water is treated very carefully as these are in very sensitive locations. We envisage that the first of these buildings will start to come on stream in the 2023 season. As of now, 20 locations have been approved to progress through to the planning process across 13 local authority jurisdictions. Subject to available funding, it is our intention that a second phase of the scheme will launch in 2024. The next area I'm going to talk about is Ireland's mountain bike experience. And back in 2012, we engaged in a piece of research to identify those activity areas where Ireland had a significant opportunity and mountain biking was to the top of the list. However, if we all remember back to 2012, we were in the depths of an economic recession and there was very limited available investment for tourism infrastructure. So in 2018, when the Rural Regeneration and Development Fund was announced, in partnership with our strategic partner, Quilcha, we dusted down our research and submitted an application to the scheme. And to date, it has been the single largest grant investment awarded at over 13 and a half million to develop five best in class mountain bike experiences. This will see the delivery of 195 kilometers of new and enhanced trail at five locations. Some like the very established Ballyhara destination, Ticknock in the Dublin mountains, Ballinastow in Wicklow, as well as the addition of new sites at Kulani in Sligo and the Schlieve Blooms in Leash and Offaly. Currently, Quilcher are developing designs for the visitor trailhead buildings, and these will go into planning later this year. And at the same time, we are working with our colleagues in Consumer Insights to make sure we develop the best proposition for Ireland's mountain bike experience, and we look forward to developing saleable experiences and putting them in the shop window in 2023. So for the mountain bike enthusiasts among you, I'm going to whet your appetite with a little video to show you some of the new trail developments. area I'm going to cover is with regard to partnerships. We in Falch Ireland don't own or oper operate any visitor attractions or experiences, but we work very closely with other partners, not only to make investments, but also to provide consumer insights and research. One such partnership is with the Department of Rural and Community Development on the Outdoor Recreation Infrastructure Scheme. Over the last four years, we have worked very collaboratively with our colleagues in the department on this scheme, which provides much needed investment for trail developments and upgrades from right across from looped walks to waymarked ways, to linkages to greenways, to existing greenways, the provision of cycle trails, as well as water trails and new blueways. The scheme operates four measures supporting small investments of up to 20,000 and much larger scale investments from 200,000 to half a million. And this map will now indicate some of the investments that have taken place. And as you can see, there has been something for every destination and every county across the country. We are looking to continue to build on this partnership over the coming years. And just to recap, that over 362 small-scale projects have been funded over the past four years, in addition to 173 larger-scale investments. Another area where we collaborate very closely is in the whole area of greenway development. We've been working with the Department of Transport for many years now, in particular on the development of the regional and national greenway strategy, and way back to the development of the Great Western Greenway in Mayo in 2011. There are currently 10 greenways at various stages of delivery under this scheme. And while we all know that these will be delivered as best-in-class trails, we want to make sure that they also work as visitor experiences. And we have recently just launched a new interpretation fund which will develop visitor amenity, wayfinding, branding and orientation schemes for each of these greenways. 
That scheme has been recently launched and we will be working closely with Greenway developers over the coming months. And the Department of Transport have committed four million to the implementation of the outcome of these interpretation schemes. This will ensure that as our portfolio of greenways expand, they will be world-class visitor experiences. Last year we saw the opening of the Limerick Greenway and the Royal Canal Greenway. And later this summer we will see the opening of the North Kerry Greenway which links in with the Limerick Greenway at Abbey Field to Listole, and also the section from Tralee out to Feenish. And as it happens, Phoenix is also one of the locations in receipt of funding for a water sports facility. So now we are seeing investment in critical infrastructure that will elevate these locations as activity destinations. Another area where we work very collaboratively is the Blue Way Ireland Partnership. And Falch Ireland, along with Waterways Ireland, Sport Ireland, Sport Northern Ireland and Tourism Northern Ireland, formed Ireland's Blue Way Partnership a number of years ago. And first up was to see what exactly we mean by blue ways and the development of a blue way proposition. So Ireland is actually the first country in the world to develop blue ways. And really blue ways are water and land based trails in a location where there is a safe water based trail at the heart of the offering. And this is delivered by water sports providers. And over the course of the next 12 months, we are very excited and we hope to achieve our ambition of having 12 fully accredited Blue Ways under the partnership. And hot off the press, we will be launching the first three of those before Easter. These are Blue Ways that have been operating as paddling trails for a number of years, but have recently completed the successful Blue Way accreditation process. So watch this space for new and exciting developments with regard to new Blue Way offerings. And we will be working very closely with our colleagues in the regional teams to roll out industry activation supports to ensure, ensure that these new investments will really work for your destination. Other partnerships include those with other state bodies and landowners. And later this morning, we will hear from John McDonough from Waterways Ireland and Rosemary Collier from the OPW. But first up, I just want to remind you of the Shannon Tourism Master Plan that was launched last year. This was the first time a holistic approach was taken to looking at an investment strategy for the Shannon to make it become an iconic visitor experience. And last year we awarded funding to a number of water sports provision supplies as well as the addition of moorings and birthing places. And these projects were delivered by the end of last year and will be fully operational for the 2022 season. In particular, two new locations in Athlone and the provision of enhanced facilities at Redbridge in Longford and on both the Roscommon and Leitrim sides of the Shannon in Ruski. Projects are well underway in Portumna at the redevelopment of Connacht Harbour and this will provide 40 new moorings as well as a trailhead for the Bear of Brefney Way, public realm investment and a two kilometre trail linking Connacht Harbour to Castle Harbour through the Portumna swimming area. A number of other projects are in development and these include a master plan for Tarman Barry and Clandra, which is the terminus of the Royal Canal and also on the National Famine Way to the Strokestown Museum that you heard Orla mention earlier. We are also looking at a Shannon Discovery Points project and very importantly, biosecurity measures to ensure that water users make sure their equipment is well cleaned and washed down as they move it from one water body to another to avoid the threat of invasive species. We have a long established relationship and partnership with the National Parks and Wildlife Service. And just to remind you of a couple of projects currently underway, we have an exciting new trail development at Connemara National Park at Mwilin. This will provide a new access point to the park and take the pressure off the already busy Diamond Hill. We thought Diamond Hill was busy pre-COVID, but it really has become a magnet for local recreation and walking in Connemara. This new exciting trail is currently at Board Planola awaiting what we hope will be a positive outcome in the coming weeks. We can then progress to detailed design and construction. It will also include the provision of visitors facilities and car parking at the new trailhead, which can also act as an access point for the upland areas of the 12 bends. Further up the coast at Wild Nathan National Park in Mayo, we are working very closely with the local team to identify a reroute and linkages of the Western Way through the vast expanse of Wild Nathan National Park and also to identify a linkage to the Owen Innie Visitor Centre developed by Bordnemona at Bella Corrick and the potential addition of loops across Bordnemona's estate as they transition from brown to green. 
The next area that I'd like to share some details with you is on the whole area of master plans. And we in Fulcher Ireland develop master plans, usually in collaboration with partners, for one of two reasons. To either address an issue or a challenge, most likely around congestion or poor visitor management. And secondly, where we see an opportunity in a destination to improve the visitor offering through the development of new and exciting infrastructural developments. We have a number of master plans currently in development. One in particular is in Glendalough to address the congestion issues in the valley, but also to open up a new visitor approach and to integrate the visitor experiences at both the National Park and the monastic site better. Similarly, up at Malin Head at the northern tip of the Wild Atlantic Way, we've often seen the images of cars parked on the road and the road becoming impassable in the height of the summer. But more importantly, we're looking to de develop a sustainable plan that will benefit the wider hinterland of Malin on the Inish Owen Peninsula, in addition to an exciting new visitor development at the headland. Ultimately, these will increase the dwell time of visitors in the area and support a stronger economic return from tourism. Last summer, we began conversations with Board Namona to identify potential opportunities across their vast estate as they cease peak production and transition from brown to green. And we are currently working on a very exciting trail strategy to identify a potential network of trails across Board Namona's estate in the Midlands that will link in to existing infrastructure such as the Royal Canal and Grand Canal Greenways. Another plaster plan that we are looking at has been developed by Quilche with Roscommon County Council for Loch Hee Forest Park. And we are looking at opportunities to implement and prioritise the actions contained in this plan. One that's a quite exciting to share also is the Bearer Brefney Way. For those of you not familiar with the project, it is Ireland's largest community and grassroots initiative and has been developed over the last 20 years by local communities from the Bearer Peninsula in West Cork right up to Black Lion in Cavan. And we have engaged with local authorities and the community groups to identify a best-in-class approach to the long-term development of the trail to ensure its sustainability. And we see massive opportunities for this to become an iconic, world-class, long-distance walking trail following in the historical steps of O'Sullivan Cam Bear and his march in the winter of 1602. We are also working on a branding and interpretation plan that will engage visitors in not just the story of O'Sullivan Cam Bear, but also in the local communities and hinterland through which it passes. Again, it will touch through 40 towns and villages where tourism has not really been on their radar. And we will be working very closely with our colleagues, particularly in Ireland's hidden heartlands, but also in Ireland's ancient east and along the Wild Atlantic Way to activate and roll out this walking trail as it comes to fruition. And the final area this morning is with regard to outdoor enhancement schemes. And most of us normally think of the outdoors, we think of rural Ireland. But certainly over the last 18 months, we have all experienced outdoor dining, initially by necessity for the only opportunity to eat out and to meet with friends in a safe environment during the pandemic. And last year, Fall to Ireland introduced two schemes to support local authorities develop outdoor dining spaces in urban areas and indirectly to support hospitality and tourism businesses weatherproof their offering. And as we found, came to find with the proper clothing and the proper weatherproofing, we actually enjoyed our outdoor dining experiences. And we look forward to enjoying more of them as these new projects come on stream in 2022, as we continue our journeys discovering Ireland. And the final area is also in urban spaces. And for a long time, it has been our ambition to animate public spaces in urban centres to be more visitor centric and to be places of creativity and inspiration. So we launched a scheme last year and there have been six successful projects that are at various stages of development in a number of cities and urban areas across the country. And these will start to come to fruition again over the next couple of years. So that was a whistle stop tour of a lot of exciting work that is currently ongoing in Fulcher, Ireland. And none of this would be possible without our partners, in particular our partners in the local authorities across the country, other government departments and state agencies. So lots in our pipeline and lots of new developments to look forward to in the near future. So now I'm going to hand back to Orla, who will introduce the next session. Thank you, Fiona. That was really interesting and some exciting projects coming on stream. As you will have seen from the projects we've shared with you so far, Fulcher work in partnership with multiple agencies and local authorities. 
While we have a lot of projects we are working on together, our partners are also working on many other projects which will benefit tourism and the sector's recovery. That is why today I'm delighted to have Rosemary Collier from OPW and John McDonough from Waterways Ireland to share with you today the wonderful work they are doing. First up is Rosemary. Rosemary is Assistant Secretary General at OPW and heads up the Heritage and Capital Works Delivery. Rosemary has extensive experience in the arts and heritage sector and is a great advocate for tourism. Hello everyone. My name is Rosemary Collier and I'm currently the Head of Heritage Services and Capital Works Delivery with the Office of Public Works. I'm delighted to be joining you today to highlight the role of the OPW in caring for and presenting our national heritage estate and to showcase some important investments the OPW is making across the country. From Orla Carroll's presentation, you will have seen the really exciting programme of projects that we are delivering under our strategic partnership with Fulcher Ireland and the Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage. So, my presentation will focus on all the other work and investment the OPW has been making and continues to make in conserving our wonderful built and natural heritage. The OPW cares for about 800 national monuments and 32 significant historic properties dispersed across the Irish landscape, including two UNESCO World Heritage Sites, Skellig Vihil and Bruna Bonia. Every year, just over 9 million ticketed or counted visitors are recorded at our sites, which range from the Great Blasket Island to Donegal Castle, from the Rock of Cashel to the Battle of the Boyne. We have a workforce of about 1,200 people working in heritage, with a range of specialisms from botanists, curators, horticulturalists and conservators, to deer keepers, stonemasons and of course our expert guide staff. You can see from the map here that we have 74 locations nationwide with visitor services, a mix of year round and seasonal operations. And our heritage sites in many cases define the unique character of our towns, villages and rural areas throughout the country. Over the next eight years, it is anticipated that through the National Development Plan, the OPW will invest approximately 200 million in the heritage estate in its care. We'll deliver a further 460 million euros worth of capital works for our national cultural institutions. So what will this investment deliver? Well, firstly, protecting and conserving our built heritage and historic landscapes for citizens and visitors to enjoy. This is our core mission. It will allow for exemplary presentation of our iconic heritage estate to visitors. It will allow us to better care for and present priceless national collections for visitors to enjoy. We will grow our cultural programming, specialist tours, talks, education and outreach, and we'll reimagine the visitor experience and provide new interpretation of sites. We'll also improve ancillary visitor facilities like cafes, toilets, parking, etc. So, starting with Dublin, there are a range of really significant projects that will transform important public spaces in the capital. At the National Botanic Gardens, we have almost 700,000 visitors annually, and many come to enjoy the splendid Turner glass houses. The final building requiring refurbishment is the Amazonian Lily House or Aquatic House, and over the next few years, the OPW will invest about 13 million in conserving this important building and opening it to the public. At the Irish National War Memorial Gardens at Island Bridge, the OPW plans to develop a new ceremonial entrance to the gardens with a new bridge across the River Liffey, linking the Phoenix Park to the other side of the river. These gardens are internationally significant and this bridge will not only transform the visitors' experience of the gardens, but it will be an important new green route for pedestrians and cyclists, linking the historically important military sites of Dublin 8, such as Kilmainham Jail and the Royal Hospital, with the Phoenix Park and environs as well as creating a critical connector on the Blue Route between the Royal and Grand Canals. At the Phoenix Park, we are very excited to be working on a major project to conserve the magazine fort and present an exciting new visitor experience in the years ahead, with a total cost of about 11 million. We are also working to enhance visitor experience in the park overall by improving cycling and pedestrian linkages, introducing public transport options and improving wayfinding and interpretation. As the green lung of Dublin, the park is an amazing place for citizens and visitors to experience a different side to the city. The Bishop's Palace at Kevin Street, also known as St Sepulchre's, will be mostly known to others as the old Kevin Street Guard Station. Set in the heart of medieval Dublin, it is the longest continuously occupied building in Dublin and the OPW plans a full conservation of the site with a view to opening it to the public as a new cultural heritage attraction in the future. 
Linking in with nearby attractions such as St. Patrick's Cathedral, Marsh's Library and Dublin Castle, this project has the potential to transform this area of the city. Our national cultural institutions include the National Museum, National Library, Crawford Art Gallery, National Gallery of Ireland and the Concert Hall. Under the NDP, about 460 million has been slated for investment in the NCIs. This will be a once in a generation investment in our cultural infrastructure. The buildings are owned and in the care of the OPW and so we will be working with the institutions to achieve ambitious and inspiring new plans for the presentation of our national collections. I have two examples here. At the National Library, we are working to transform the west wing of the building on Kildare Street to provide a completely new visitor experience with a new public entrance, cafe, seminar room and exhibition space. Similarly, at the National Concert Hall, this project hopes to achieve new performance spaces, the refurbishment of the existing concert hall and a reimagining of the Earlsford Terrace buildings. The OPW will this year publish a plan for the future enhancement of Dublin Castle and environs. It will include important improvement to public realm, the old city walls and significant improvements to the visitor experience within the castle itself. So as we look across the country then, the OPW is very proud to be opening Ansgrove Gardens in Castletown Roach, County Cork to visitors for the first time this year, following six years of refurbishment of these unique gardens and plant collection. Garden tourism is becoming ever more important with international visitors and North Cork will not disappoint as the OPW also continues to invest in Donnerail Estate. Having completed the ground floor of the house and opened it to the public in 2019, we're finishing the first floor this year and Donnerail Court is fast becoming one of Ireland's most attractive and interesting historic houses for visitors. Barry's Court Castle is also undergoing a major conservation with our specialist stonemasons and there's an electrical upgrading there too. It's one of our finest Irish town, tower houses with beautifully refurbished gardens and it'll be a major boost for this part of Cork when it reopens. The National Botanic Gardens at Kilmacurra is celebrated for the unique plant collection and botanic gardens, but the house at its heart has been neglected for too long. The OPW is undertaking a major conservation project to save the house in phase one, and in the longer term to present the story of the Acton family who for hundreds of years cultivated this unique country garden in Wicklow. The OPW has also acquired the old Deer Park lands and this year new walking routes and trails will open to the public. The walled garden is in another important project there, which will be advanced. So in all, Kilmacurra will see a significant transformation in the years ahead. At Emo Court, the OPW has been working on a phased programme of works to refurbish the roof, first floor and basement of the house to create an exciting new interpretation of the various histories of the house. There's also an extensive programme of investment in the estate, in the walled garden, a new visitor car park, and we'll refurbish gardener's cottages. And with its location just off the M7, Emo Court will have so much to offer a diverse range of visitors in the future. At Portumna Castle, there has been decades of conservation and investment to bring it to where it is today, and there's still more to do. First up, we are developing a new scheme for the walled garden, and again with garden tourism, Portumna Castle and Gardens will be a really magical attraction in East Galway. At Scattery Island, off the coast of County Clare, there's 1,500 years of history, much of it early Christian heritage sites associated with St. Senan, which the OPW has been conserving for decades. Currently, we are working on an important project to protect and present the street, an important collection of vernacular buildings which will allow us to tell another layer of this unique island's story. And finally, at Castletown House in County Kildare, Ireland's largest Palladian mansion, we currently welcome just over one million visitors to the estate, most of whom come to enjoy the wonderful architecture and beautiful landscape surrounding the house. OPW plans to invest about four million in refurbishing the farmyard range of buildings to create a new cafe restaurant, retail, toilets and event spaces to meet the sheer volume of demand the estate is currently experiencing. We continue to invest in the historic interiors of this wonderful house, but a modern restaurant offering in particular will be critical to Castletown's future success. 
So this is just a snapshot of the diverse range of conservation and redevelopment projects we are working on to ensure our visitors get to experience the very best of our national heritage. I'd like to finish by thanking Fáilte Ireland for inviting me to share with you some of the OPW's programme for the years ahead. And we look forward to working with stakeholders right across the country to ensure our heritage continues to deliver at a high level for Ireland's tourism economy. Thank you, Rosemary. Sometimes we forget the volume of work that is done by OPW and what an important asset these sites are for tourism. I'm delighted now to introduce John McDonough. John is the CEO of Waterways Ireland and his long-term strategy is to reimagine our waterways sustainably for the public good. Today he's going to share this with us. Over to you, John. Hello all. Firstly, thank you to Fulch Ireland for inviting me to speak today. Now let me introduce myself. My name is John McDonough and I've been Chief Executive of Waterways Ireland since 2019. I would like to use this opportunity today to introduce the organisation to anyone who may not be familiar with it, to provide an overview of some of our major investment projects and to give you a glimpse of what we are planning for the future. By doing this, I hope to show you how Waterways Ireland can positively support the recovery of the tourism sector throughout the island of Ireland in both the short and long term. So who are we and what do we do? Waterways Ireland was formed in 1999. It is the largest of six north-south implementation bodies established under the British-Irish Agreement of 1998. We are accountable to the North-South Ministerial Council. We are the cross-border navigational authority responsible for the management, maintenance, development and promotion of over a thousand kilometres of inland navigable waterways, principally for recreation purposes. That's our remit. As you will see from the map on the right, our portfolio of waterways stretches from Coleraine in the north to Limerick in the south and as far east as the Grand Canal Basin in Dublin. We currently employ approximately 300 permanent staff who were assisted by a team of seasonal recruits. In 2020, we recorded approximately 3.5 million users of our waterways. The current valuation of the rebuild costs of our infrastructure is estimated at 1.5 billion. Waterways Ireland creates social, economic and environmental well-being value of 560 million annually. And now, what do we do? Being mindful of time, I will take you through just a couple of projects and I will expand separately on the Shannon Tourism Master Plan in a few moments. In 2021, Waterways Ireland launched the Royal Canal Greenway. We worked in partnership with four local authorities to complete the Greenway between Maynooth and Clondara. The Greenway stretches for 130 kilometres, making it the longest in Ireland. It provides a significant tourism and recreation opportunity for visitors and locals alike. In 2019, Waterways Ireland completed phase one of the restoration of the Ulster Canal from Loch Erne to Castle Saunderson. We are now working on phase two, a new navigation from Clonus to Clonfad, expected to be completed in quarter four, 2023. Preparatory works for the final phase three, approximately 10 kilometers of new navigation between Castle Saunderson and Clonfad are also underway. This is a cross-border initiative identified in the new decade new approach strategy supported by our government departments and the shared island unit. As you can see, there's a mix of projects here which encompass on-water visitor experience projects, off-water trail projects and urban regeneration projects in Dublin and Tullamore. Ultimately, as an organisation, Waterways Ireland's purpose is to create value for the public good. And that value comprises social, economic and environmental well-being value. Earlier, you heard me refer to our creation of 560 million of value annually. And whilst there are many routes to value creation, I'd like to highlight three of the main areas here. Connectivity, collaboration and reimagining. Waterways Ireland, working in collaboration with third parties, is an enabler and a facilitator in improving connectivity across the island of Ireland. 
the blue ways and green ways we develop across the country are key components to ultimately creating a network of all-Ireland connectivity. For example, the preferred route for the Galway to Athlone Cycleway was announced before Christmas, through Convara, Gort, Woodford, and along the Shannon through Port Omna and Mielik. Separately, Waterways Ireland, in collaboration with Transport Infrastructure Ireland and local authorities, are to select a preferred route for the Limerick to Scarif Greenway next month. An additional spur from Scarif to Woodford is also being proposed as part of this project, which will ensure connectivity between both projects. These new developments combined with the existing at loan to Dublin cycleway will provide connectivity that spans across the country from Dublin to Limerick and Galway. And we also work to creatively reimagine the experience for daily users and visitors. On screen are two examples of reimagined connectivity projects. In 2021, we launched Mielik Weir and Walkway, a 3.2 million restoration project. By building a 295 metre walkway on top of a Weir remediation project, we've created infrastructure which links the historic village of Mielik in East Galway to Lismore in West Offaly. This walkway forms part of the Hymeny Way and the Bera Brefni Way walking trails. This is an example of how our infrastructure not only links physical locations but also communities. Along the bottom of the slide you will see Acres Lake Boardwalk launched in 2017. The 600 metre boardwalk was Ireland's first floating boardwalk. It is the start of a six and a half kilometre linear walking and cycling trail along the Shannon Blue Way from Acres Lake to Battlebridge Lock near Leitrim Village. It's a lovely example of walking on water. As we are all aware, collaboration is at the heart of any successful project. In 2019, Waterways Ireland signed a strategic partnership programme with Falch Ireland. The first major output from this partnership was the Shannon Tourism Master Plan, which was developed in collaboration with 10 local authorities. The master plan was launched in 2021. An estimated 76.5 million investment is committed over the next 10 years to deliver on the master plan ambitions. Implementation has already begun. In year one of the plan, six projects have been delivered with a further two in development. Projects include the refurbishment of Drummond Harbour, the development of new floating moorings in Ruski County Leitrim, Redbridge County Longford, and at Lone County Westmead, and a canal walk in County Roscommon. The project is an exemplar plan of collaboration and one Waterways Ireland hopes to develop for each of its navigations. As we continue to strive to increase the use of the inland navigations, reimagining our waterways is integral to achieving this success. Dublin is a key location for Waterways Ireland but it is also a location which has suffered from underinvestment over the years. This means there's a lot of work to do, but also a lot of potential opportunities. Waterways Ireland is currently formulating a strategic vision for the Dublin Docklands and the Dublin Canals to maximise the unique water assets in the city and county. There are two ongoing work streams, one focused on development opportunities and a second focused on on water sustainable living. Many of you will recognise the latter work stream as a reference to residential moorings and houseboats, which are prevalent along the canals in many European cities. We will have the final development vision document by the end of quarter two, 2022. I would now like to share a short video with you to show you the scale of the Dublin Docklands and the scope of our assets in this area.
Here we see several visionary Dublin Docklands development projects. Those highlighted in light blue are potential Waterways Ireland projects. They include the restoration of the Grand Canal Sea Lock, redevelopment of City Block 19 site, development of Charlotte Quay Boardwalk, installation of additional moorings, a Bolands Mill Boardwalk, a Dublin City Greenway, redevelopment of her visitor centre as a Greenway trailhead, and the development of summer outdoor and water activity areas. The possibilities in the Dublin Docklands and Dublin Canals area really are endless. With the right support and resources, we can create connectivity, provide visitor amenities, develop linear canal parks, maintain habitats on water, support sustainable on-water living, and assist heritage restoration. And where the possibilities are endless, so too are the benefits. Increase visitor numbers, enterprise opportunities, job creation, sustainable tourism development, improved user amenities, to name but a few. One of the main strategic priorities for me when I joined Waterways Ireland was the development of a 10-year long-term plan. Waterways Ireland has never had a long-term plan beyond the three-year corporate plan, so setting a future strategic direction will be welcomed by all. The plan is nearing conclusion and we will share it with our government sponsor departments in the coming months. I recognise there is a lot of information on one single slide here, but I wanted to give you a quick sense of the ambition our 10-year long-term plan sets out to achieve. Our core values are to be passionate, collaborative, accountable and innovative. Our purpose is to be the custodian of the inland navigations and collaborate to reimagine, maintain, develop and promote them to sustain communities, environment and heritage. Our scale of ambition is to be recognised as having enabled the creation of inspirational inland navigations and waterway experiences through conservation and sustainable development for the common good. And we will channel our purpose and ambition through six strategic pillars. These are organisation development and governance, sustainable funding model, asset portfolio management, corporate reputation and brand equity, climate action, environment and heritage, and development and innovation. As I said earlier, our goal as a publicly funded body is to add more value for the public good. We believe that by fulfilling our potential over the 10-year period of the plan, positively influencing the private boating, recreation, cruise hire, angling, health and well-being, events and water quality sectors, we can create value of 1 billion euro per annum. And as a facilitator and enabler, the implementation of our strategy will positively support the recovery of the tourism sector throughout the island of Ireland in both the short and long term. As one of our key stakeholders, I invite you to take part in our long-term plan public consultation when it is launched. The consultation will run for six weeks and I would welcome any feedback, positive or negative, as both will help us to improve and get to where we want to be. Details of the consultation will be shared via our social media channels closer to the time. I'm aware in the short time I have, I've whizzed through a lot of information here. If there is anything you would like to discuss further, please feel free to reach out to me. I would be happy to hear from any of you. I'm relatively active on social media, especially Twitter and LinkedIn. And once again, thank you to Fulcher Ireland for this opportunity and thanks to all of you for your time. Thank you, John. 3.5 million users of our waterways in 2020, and that's before all the plans you mentioned are complete. Our waterways really are a great asset that has even greater potential for tourism going forward. For our final session this morning, Rory Dean will take you through the exciting projects that have been granted funding under our first platform for growth, Immersive Heritage and Cultural Attractions. There are four exciting pro projects we are going to share with you, but I won't ruin Rory's presentation by spilling the beans, so I'll hand straight over to him and let him share with you these wonderful projects. Over to you, Rory. 
Thanks, Orla. And good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be able to share with you today a little bit more about the four large-scale projects that comprise the most significant investment in visitor attractions ever undertaken by Fall to Ireland and which will have widespread national and regional economic benefits. So just a bit of background to start. This was the first scheme announced under the Platforms for Growth programme back in May 2019. We wanted the initial focus to be on investment in our heritage and cultural offering. Prior to COVID, over 70% of all overseas tourists would visit attractions of historic or cultural interest. Equally, millions of domestic trips are undertaken every year by Irish people to heritage sites and various cultural attractions around the country. So this scheme is all about taking our heritage product to a whole new level and building on our heritage and culture as a genuine source of competitive advantage for our tourism industry. A national call for proposals was issued in May 2019 and from over 200 expressions of interest it was eventually whittled down to the four projects I will take you through shortly. Projects were assessed across a range of scheme outcomes as you can see on this slide. I won't go through all of these but in short we certainly wanted to grow our stock of large scale visitor attractions that would have significant economic impact. So fewer but bigger for this particular programme and for sure there was a heavy focus on innovation and creativity. In particular, we want to see new, immersive, story-driven experiences that would bring our diverse and vibrant heritage to life. So we'll turn now to the projects. And the first project I'd like to introduce is the Shannon Pot and Cavan Burn Park. And what we really loved about this proposal was the fusion of cultural and natural heritage. This visitor experience will be twofold, consisting of a brand new flagship tourism attraction located at the source of the River Shannon, the Shannon Pot, and the enhancement of the existing Cavan Burn Park. The Discovery Centre at the Shannon Pot will reveal the stories of the Shannon and allow visitors to explore its rich mythology and heritage and discover really how it has influenced Irish landscape, people and society from earlier settlers to modern times. The project is located in the UNESCO designated Kulka Lakelands Geopark and Cavan Burn Park is widely recognised as one of the finest prehistoric relic landscapes in Ireland. The upgrade to the Burn Park will include the installation of an elevated viewing platform, which will showcase the amazing scenery all around. This 6.5 million euro project will be developed by Cavan County Council. We believe it will make a huge difference to tourism at the northern end of Ireland's Hidden Heartlands region by providing an anchor visit attraction of scale. We estimate this attraction will welcome over 88,000 visitors at, after 10 years, generating 30 million in tourism spend, which will in turn support over 800 jobs. So from Cavan we head north to a place called Fort Dunree, which has an absolute spectacular location on the Inishowen Peninsula. The fort, which dates from 1798, is perched on a cliff, providing stunning views of Lux Willie and the Atlantic coastline. The fort is set out over 70 acres and will physically link the three unique elements of the site. Firstly, there's Lux Willie itself. Secondly, the promontory fort, which juts out at the cliff edge. And thirdly, the high fort, which is set back a bit further and looks out over breathtaking views. Key elements of the project include development of spectacular viewing points close to and above the water, a funicular to bring the visitor to the high fort with its spectacular 360 degree overview of the area, upgrading the watchtowers and creating new viewing platforms at the high fort, upgrading existing museum buildings and redesigning the exhibition space in the promontory fort, and the provision of a restaurant and other visitor facilities and amenities required for a site of this scale. So overall, this project proposes a really imaginative use of landscape and scenery, which together with a real sense of history, points to a winning combination for our visitors. The fort currently attracts around 14,000 paying visitors. We want to elevate that substantially so that after 10 years, the project will be attracting in the region of 145,000 visitors. This will have generated about 45 million in tourism spend, thereby supporting 1,200 jobs. The estimated total cost of the project is about 12.5 million euros, and it'll be delivered by Donegal County Council. So from Donegal, we travel to Dublin and here a new attraction called This Is Ireland will give the visitor an exhilarating experience of flying like a bird over Ireland's awe-inspiring scenery, iconic tourist attractions and heritage sites. The experience will include a pre-show where visitors can get an overview of Ireland's history and culture, as well as the story of Ireland in the present. However, the main event is a panoramic 5D flight simulator comprised of a large 21 metre diameter spherical screen, state-of-the-art digital projection system and advanced movable platform units where visitors are seated. 
The flight experience is enhanced with 5D effects such as wind and spray and scent, etc. As well as being great fun, it offers a brilliant opportunity to showcase visitor sites and destinations throughout Dublin and Ireland and perhaps act as a stimulus to promote and drive visitor traffic to the places featured in the flight experience. Our research shows that this concept is viewed as highly differentiating by consumers and perceived as an out of the ordinary attraction for Ireland. Although we have many strong heritage and cultural attractions in Dublin, we believe this will inject another level of fun and entertainment into the product offering in the capital. This project has the potential to be attracting over 400,000 visitors per annum after 10 years and generate almost 125 million in visitor expenditure. The grantee is Western Attractions Limited, an Irish company, who will deliver the attraction in partnership with an international developer of flight simulator experiences. And finally, we head west to County Mayo, the location of our final project under PFG1. Here, we will be working with the new owners to bring about a total transformation of the existing offer at Westport House Estate. In a nutshell, there are three main components to this project. Firstly, we have the development of a new visitor centre complex at the Coach House, including reception, retail and a destination cafe. This complex will also house a dramatic new immersive experience telling the amazing story of Grace O'Malley, known also as the Pirate Queen, a really significant historical character native to the area. Visitors will follow Grace's story to the home of her descendants, Westport House, built in the 1700s and one of the most important country house domains surviving in Ireland. To supplement the existing collection of historical artefacts and furniture, there will be a reimagined guided tour, dress rooms and immersive experiences across three floors in the basement and just outside the formal Italianate gardens will be reinstated. Thirdly, and the most striking element of the development, is a highly creative rewilding project within the 300 acre estate. Conceived around ancient Irish myths and rituals relating to the tree of life, Visitors will go on an interactive journey through three separate outdoor areas that will include a treetop walk, living tree tunnels, a labyrinth and many other natural features. This project has been awarded our highest ever investment grant, 20.2 million, and this will create a must-see world-class visitor experience which will have powerful regional impact because it's of a scale that will attract and retain visitors in the northern half of the Wild Atlantic Way. We estimate that this project will attract over 300,000 visitors a year after 10 years, generating about 90 million in expenditure, which will support 2,500 jobs. So that's the end of our brief tour. Uh, Minister Catherine Martin announced the funding last summer and work is well underway with the grantees. By their very nature, large capital projects do take time and present various challenges along the way, but all going well, we would hope to bring these to market within the next three to four years. An estimated total cost of all four projects is around 76 million euro, of which just over 44 is being provided by Falch Ireland in grant aid. In terms of economic value, we estimate that over a 10 year period, these projects will generate 289 million in tourism spend, and that level of expenditure would in turn support around 8,000 jobs indirectly in the economy. These projects successfully demonstrated that they were the best place to achieve the outcomes of the Platforms for Growth scheme, we strongly believe that these new attractions will be game changers for their regions and for Ireland. So that's it for me. Thank you for your time. And I'll hand you back now to Orla. Thank you, Rory. I don't know about you, but I'm certainly looking forward to seeing these projects coming on stream. I'm pushed to pick a favourite, but I suppose being from Cavan, I'd have to pick the Shannon Pot. I'd like to thank you all for your time this morning. I hope you found the session informative and hopefully leave us with a bit of excitement and positivity about the future. A lot of investment is going into tourism and over the coming years we have loads of new and enhanced experiences to, vote, to motivate both domestic and international visitors to holiday in Ireland. It's important as a sector that we maximise and leverage these investments to assist the recovery. All these projects came about because of collaboration. As you can see, in Fulcher, Ireland, we work closely with local industry, local authorities and a myriad of local and national stakeholders to improve the experience visitors will have in tourism areas throughout the country. Investing in world-class visitor experience is critical for driving demand and driving tourism growth in Ireland. And the projects we share with you this morning will be essential for the growth in the coming years. We don't have a Q&A today, but if you have any questions or would like further details on any project, please contact your local Fault Ireland representative. We are all happy to help. In Fulcher, Ireland, we believe the future is bright and myself and my colleagues look forward to meeting you all soon and in person. The tourism sector's journey to recovery has started and we look forward to taking that journey with you. So thank you all very much. <laughs>